Hi everybody. Just a brief presentation today to look at some of the things we're working on as it relates to connecting the Autodesk infrastructure products with the Esri ArcGIS products. So specifically we're going to be looking at the Autodesk connector for ArcGIS and that will allow us to connect InfraWorks as well as Civil 3D to ArcGIS online. So let me flip over. We'll take a look at getting started with some of the data that we have. I'm currently looking at ArcGIS online. I'm going to drill down into some of the content that I have access to. I've got a 196th Street project that's in Washington, uh, Washington State. It's comprised right now. I've got some information that represents some uh, storm sewer pipes and structures, as well as I've got the public road center lines, and then I've got parcels for the area of the project that we're working in. So if I drill down and look at some of the data directly, we'll see what we have for attributes on this data. So we'll go ahead and open that up in the viewer. And what we'll do is um, we'll take a look at these are the structures and the pipes. If we select a structure, I can see I've got some limited attribution. I've got a rim elevation. I've got a manhole diameter of four feet, so the, the units are in feet. I've got a sump distance of 7.35. In this case, the sump, sump distance represents from the rim elevation down to the bottom of the physical structure. And if I look at my pipes, the data that I have is I've got an invert up and down. Pipe material, pipe size, uh, one foot. Also, the units for that will be in feet. This will be important to remember what the units are later when we map this. Uh, description is being storm sewer. And then it's got a SU value. The SU value is a something you're unfamiliar with that has to do with the quality of the data. So if I bring GIS data into a design application, it's good to understand what the quality of that GIS data is. That SU value is one way to provide an attribute so that folks understand whether it's high quality data, which would be SU value of A. It goes A through D in our case, A being survey grade information, D being they heard from a friend of a friend that there's a structure in this location. So um, the idea is that not all GIS data is the same. By providing a SU value when we bring it into another application, those folks have some understanding of the quality of the data that they're working with. So that's what we're looking at on the, uh, the storm sewer side. So let's move into our first application here with InfraWorks. I'm going to come into my 196th Street model. When I start, I've got a model that was created essentially from Model Builder. I've got uh, a surface information. I've got an aerial photo that's draped over that. I've got some buildings that were brought in as part of uh, Model Builder. And the yeah, I'd like to start moving forward with the project. So in this case, it happens to be widening this, uh, this street here, putting a, uh, a bike or a pedestrian lane on, on this side of the roadway. to go. So to get started with that project, it's going to involve some redevelopment of the roadway. And as part of that process, I'd like to bring in some of the utilities if I have access to those and, and view them in my project. So because we have those available to us in ArcGIS Online, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at from the data sources, we can bring in data from a number of different sources. And historically, we've been able to work with geospatial data. The one thing that's different with the Autodesk connector for ArcGIS is it's a first example of what we have through the Autodesk and Esri partnership in that we're able to reach directly into their data and then bring that information back into objects that can be consumed directly in InfraWorks or in Civil 3D. So some folks have wondered, well, how, how the uh, partnership has um, changed our abilities with the software and it, it makes our, um, the, the, our ability, our end user's ability to uh, seamlessly move things back and forth a lot easier than what it's been in the past. So we've been able to consume a lot of different pieces of data. Let's, uh, let's come over here to a, a button that we've got access to now for to uh, connect to ArcGIS Online. We'll go ahead and select that. Uh, it's automatically able to detect within ArcGIS Online the limits of our current InfraWorks model. I can come over to the side here. I can see public information that's available in that location or I can drill down to my content. So we'll come in and reference the data that we just referenced or took a look at a moment ago. Not gonna do the roads at this point. I wanna bring in the, the structures and the pipes. I can click on the little eyeball here to be able to display those for us on the screen. 
So we've got uh, structures, pipe information, the structures itself. When I bring that into InfraWorks, this is where I can convert it directly into objects that InfraWorks can view or work with. We'll say structures will be pipeline connectors and my pipes will be gravity pipes. We'll go ahead and select this as well. I'm going to add that to my design project. So it's reading that information, it's bringing it in. I'm currently using InfraWorks 2021 as well as Civil 3D 2021. Some of this functionality was available in the 2020 version as well. Uh, however, with each release of the software, our abilities to um, bring in either different types of objects or change different types of uh, attribution or position of that information has, uh, has continued to evolve. So I'm using the 2021 versions. We bring that in, that data shows up in our display here. We've got pipes and structures. As I, I first look under underground, we don't see any of that data because it evolved from a 2D shape file. The only information it has with respect to elevation and size comes from the attribution. So what we're going to do is we're going to now take those objects and model them in InfraWorks such that they can be represented as a three-dimensional pipe network. So I'm going to double click on the structures first. When that comes up, we can come in and we can set what we want the, uh, the manhole structure to, uh, to look like. In our case, I'm just going to use a default round structure for now. My elevation offset is going to be my rim elevation, so we'll drill in and get that. The size of the structure is going to be my manhole diameter, both in the X and the Y direction. And the height is going to be my sump distance. Remember, that is the distance in my case for this data set from the rim to the bottom of the structure. So I'll go ahead and also give that a negative value because I want it to go down rather than up. We'll go ahead and close and refresh. We'll let that reprocess on the screen here. And if we come over and look at those structures, we see that they've appeared. And if we come down below, we can see the structures have been modeled and are positioned correctly in our model. Let's uh, move next to the pipes. We'll go ahead and double click on that so that we can format those. Same thing, we're going to take and edit the, uh, the pipes. I can select a style representation for that. I'm going to do concrete pipe for, uh, for this demonstration. The inverts, I want to go from the invert up to the invert down. And the size of the pipe will be my pipe size in both the X and the Y direction. And we'll go ahead and close and refresh. When that's done, let's maybe change my display here so I can see through the, my surface and I can see down and see the, uh, the pipes that connect my structures. All right, so that quickly, we were able to reach directly into the ArcGIS Online, bring in a, what would be essentially graphically a flat 2D representation of a uh, geospatial information and turn it into a three-dimensional pipe network. From here, some of the things that I could do, let's maybe, let's maybe make this a little bit easier to see here. We'll come over and turn off the ground and just look at the utilities. So the benefit of having access to this information is I can now start doing things like stylizing the data based off of that. So with my project, for example, maybe I, I want to start getting some idea about the quality of the information I'm working with. I maybe theme it based on the SU value. So we'll look at uh, the, in InfraWorks here, we'll go ahead and create a new feature theme. I'm going to call this SU values. We'll use the attribution of SU that comes directly from ArcGIS Online. There's four of them. So we'll just use individual values and I'll click on OK. So with that, that theme, I can see that with respect to this project, the information that's on the north side is um, I'm, my invert elevations and that are, are in pretty good shape. The information that's on the south side the, uh, the quality of that from a, uh, a SU value starts to decline. So as I make my decisions um, with this data, I have a good idea what things I can trust and maybe other things that I probably have to go out and get a little extra information or confirmation on before I, I uh, rely on that data, data too heavily. At the same time, I also might want to make a theme because this is storm sewer 
I'd like to evaluate it based on size because pipe sizes, if we're gonna be maybe reconnecting uh, information from or uh, drainage from a building or a detention area or something like that, as part of this project, I wanna know where where the uh, the main lines are, if the main line or the, the larger pipes on one side of the street or the other. Let's uh, take a quick look at that. We'll come down and look at that as pipe size. Our pipe size was in feet. There's only a handful of values there. We'll go ahead and say OK. And now we've colorized that so I can see that uh, we've got one foot pipe. Uh, 1.25 is a 15 inch pipe and then I've got 18 inch pipe. So my larger run is over on uh, on the north side of the street as well. Okay, so fantastic. We're able to use that, bring it in, use the attribution that was part of that data to start making some design decisions. At the same time, we can come in and I can select, for example, this pipe, and I can come in and look at the, uh, the attribution that was set up for this particular pipe in ArcGIS Online. What I'm going to do is maybe I've got some additional data that provides some, some more information about this, this particular uh, component. And I know that uh, it's a SU value of C, shows that it's one foot, but I find out later that it's actually uh, 15 inches. So I'm gonna set it to 1.25 feet and I'm gonna set that value to, uh, instead of C, I'll set that to B at this point. Okay, so as we make those, those changes, we see that it's automatically reflected in our theme. However, once it's reflected in our, our theme and we've made some changes, if that's something that we would like to push back to ArcGIS Online, we can do that as well. What I'm going to do is we'll come back to my data sources and we'll take a look at pipes here. And if I right click on that, I've got an option that I can save that back. So we'll say save back. The uh, was successfully saved back to ArcGIS. I'll also point out that the save back is controlled within ArcGIS, so uh, that is still controlled on, on their end if, it's, if the layer itself or the data that we're pushing back to was set up such that it can be edited, then um, you, know, you have the ability to do that. If it was set up that it can't be edited, then the, the pushback would come back and give you a notice that it was unable to, uh, to write to that file. Okay, so we come back into ArcGIS Online, we select this, there were the original values. Let's go ahead and refresh that on the screen. And when that gets refreshed, we'll select that same component and we see that the pipe size is now 1.25. The SU value has been updated to B. All right, so once again, this is where some of this exchange of data and that is, is different than what we've had before. It's a much more seamless interaction. We're able to push and pull. And, uh, and provide those updates in a way that it just literally wasn't possible in the past. Okay, so uh, in some cases we might wanna create some new, new features or new geometry. Let's take a look at what that might look like. I'm gonna turn my surface layers back on here. Let's create another uh, pipe network, maybe just some inlets or whatever in the parking lot over here. Just as a quick example of that, we'll create a drainage network here. I'm going to call this, we'll just call it new, let's call it new drainage for right now. And we'll just pick some rough points just to uh, have something to work with. So we'll put one in here, one in here. I'll jump to the other side. That's not a, not necessarily a realistic design. I just want to show you the the process. So I've created some uh, some new utilities in InfraWorks, something that didn't exist in ArcGIS previously. So we'll let that process complete to get those modeled. We'll then go ahead and take a look at those structures in that pipe. So that's in. I didn't set any uh, slopes or elevations just looking at pipes and structures at this point. If we come down underneath, I can select a particular pipe and we can see some of the information about it. It's got a slope, but it's pretty fairly uh, low slope. I've got invert information about that as well. If I'd like to push that back into ArcGIS Online, what I can do is we can come over here to 
my uh, present and share. We'll come down to share. There's an option that says public to ArcGIS or publish to ArcGIS. I'll select that. I can connect to my, my site. We'll define the area that I'm interested in with a bounding box. So we'll come over and select there. Shows me what information uh, can be pushed out. It's also detected that I've got uh, structure information. It, it automatically uh, uh, doesn't check that or, or makes it irrelevant because it's already, uh, it's already part of my uh, ArcGIS. Uh, so we won't necessarily push those things back out. We'll just do the pipelines and the pipeline connectors. We'll go ahead and hit publish. It shows us in the interface the location of where that data is. It shows us that the pipelines will go back as, as blinds. Uh, the category for the connectors will be points. Uh, layer names, we'll just call this new. And I apologize, my dialogue is acting a little strange with my recording software today. So it's, it's a factor of my recording rather than the uh, reflection of the solution here. Uh, we can also drill down into the attributes that exist for those particular objects. So you can elect to uh, push them all, push only a couple of things. So depending on your particular solution, you can push as much or as little data. If you have some things in there that's of a critical nature that not everybody should have access to, you can control what data goes back to ArcGIS Online. Go to Next. We'll give this a name. This is going to be... We'll say new, new drainage, and we'll give it some tags of 196th Street, Utilities, and Storm. Say next. Publish location. I'm going to put that in my 196th Street project folder. We'll go ahead and publish that. All right, so we windowed an area, uh, identified the components that are in that area. Uh, from that, we were able to push that back to ArcGIS Online, and we have some controls over how it will go to ArcGIS Online, how it will be represented, uh, points, lines, or polygons, as well as attribution, and then what folder and that it'll go to in that environment. So that's been completed. We'll go ahead and view that in ArcGIS. It'll immediately take us to that area. And we see our, uh, our structures and that have been, uh, structures and pipes have been brought in. Okay, so process of, uh, of moving that or creating new geometry, pushing it out to generate another, um, be, begin working another map or layer, we're able to do that uh, fairly quickly. Let's, uh, let's do this. I'm going to shift gears. Let's close out of here for a moment. And I'm going to close out of InfraWorks, and I want to show you a similar example, but we'll be using Civil 3D. So we'll close out of InfraWorks. We'll bring up Civil 3D. I've, I'm already in a drawing here. It has no data in it at this point, but I want to show you that I do have a coordinate system. A coordinate system is going to be important because geospatial data and that, it's already going to be on a known projection. I want to make sure this gets mapped to the right projection as well. I'm going to begin by connecting to the InfraWorks model that I was in. So we'll go to Open InfraWorks Model. We'll be able to go back to my desktop here. Oh, grab where I, I put that. It's going to be under my documents here. InfraWorks Models. And here is my 196th Street utilities. We'll go ahead and connect to that. Notates the uh, coordinate system that is currently being used in uh, InfraWorks. We'll look at the area of interest. I'll select area. We'll use online map data. And Civil 3D will automatically show me the limits of the InfraWorks model. I also had it turn on the aerial imagery so that I can see that and that is uh, the area that we're working with. In fact, I'm not going to worry about specifying any, any additional size or location. We'll go ahead and just use the extents of that for right now. I'm going to refine my selection set. What I'm going to pull from that data is not necessarily any of the pipes or anything like that. We'll just bring the surface in. 
I'm not going to use any of the pipes or drainage networks because I'm going to connect to ArcGIS and, and utilize that from there. So let's go ahead, bring in that surface. We'll say open model. It's in. Let's turn off the imagery. We can see there's the existing ground surface. And I'm going to do one more thing just so we've got some representation on the screen of, of where we're at is I've got some geometry for the improvements that are going to be made to the roadway. So I'll go ahead and reference that in here so that we can see the widening in the bike path. And like I said, we'll, we'll have some representation or provide some context for the utilities that we're looking at. So that's been brought in. I'm going to turn on the layers and there is the information for that portion of the roadway. Okay. Now, much like on the InfraWorks side, maybe in InfraWorks I'm doing this as a conceptual or a rapid prototype of the, the project and I want to reference the data. Maybe on the Civil 3D side, I'm, I'm referencing it for a different purpose. I'm now moving further into design and I want to take advantage of, you know, making more detailed design decisions or just represent uh, where the utilities are in relationship to what I'm working on. So let's go ahead and reach in and grab that. So we'll say insert. Here is the Autodesk connector for ArcGIS. If I was not logged in previously, it would ask me to log in. Now when it comes in, I'm going to tell it where my project is. In this case, this is in uh, Washington State. And the area that I'm looking for, I know is in this, so it's 196th Street. So our project is right in here. So we'll take a look at that. I'm just going to kind of move it more to the center. There we go. And I'm going to window the area that I'm interested in. That will define the limits of where ArcGIS Online will go and retrieve data. So once again, public data, I've got access to a number of different pieces of information in that particular area. Instead, I'm going to move over to my content. We'll go into the 196th Street Improvements. We'll bring in, much like before, the structures and the pipes. However, this time when we click on the drop-down, we'll see that we can have those converted directly into Civil 3D objects. Now, because they're a structure, it limits what we can select because we can't map a structure to a pipe or something like that or to a feature line. And the Civil components that we have access to currently, we've got uh, points, we've got gravity pipes, we've got structures, we've got parcels, we've got alignments, and... Um, uh, we've got feature lines, so we can we can map it to a number of different ones, and, and the system will automatically populate which ones are applicable for the data that we're looking at. So we'll go ahead and do structures, in this case storm pipes. This will come in as gravity pipes. I'll add that to my design project. When we're working with pipes and structures, we've got a schema mapping that will allow us to start to map it to styles and other information um, to, uh, to size it and, and have it uh, become a three-dimensional uh, pipe network appropriately in the Civil 3D side. I'm going to start, I could assign default values for those things I may not have values for. I do have values when it relates to the structure for the diameter. And like we looked at initially, that is in feet currently. The structure, let's see, the, uh, I've got size, I've got width, late, Length, height, I've got sump depth. We'll go ahead, uh, structure height is going to be my sump distance. And that is going to be in feet as well. We'll come over to the pipes. We'll do the inner diameter is my pipe size. That is going to be in feet. The invert elevation, invert up, invert down. All right, so we'll grab the data from our attribution on the GIS side. We'll go ahead and say OK. It's going to build that pipe network for us. We'll give that a moment to uh, complete that task. All right, so there is our storm network brought in for us. If I select a pipe, 
I can right click on that and we can look at the pipe properties themselves. So I can see the slope of the pipe is 1%. I can see my invert elevation uh, up and down. Uh, I can come down, I can see the size of that pipe, the material. I can also go ahead and grab the structure and we can look at those structure properties. We'll look down at uh, its uh, depth. There's uh, some pipe floor, floor thick, thickness. Most of those are going to be defaults. My, uh, my frame size and that four feet, all of that looks good. Or in this case, it was, it was displayed as 48 inches. Uh, if I'd like to see the attribution, that was not lost in the process. It was brought in as property set data. If I select this and we look at properties and we come and look at extended data, here is the uh, information for that particular pipe. So we can see it was brought in as the 1.25 that we set earlier with the SU value of B. And if I were to grab the structure and look at extended data, I would see the same uh, attribution that came from ArcGIS Online. Okay, so quick way to take that geospatial data and turn it into a pipe network. Other things that I can create, maybe I'd like to see this in a profile. If I've got some of the centerline geometry already available to me in GIS, I can bring that data in. Let's go back to the connector here. We'll go to my content. And this time I'm going to select the WAPR, which is Washington Public Roads. We'll go ahead and bring that into alignments. If I turn on the, uh, the eyeball for that, we can see that is the uh, alignment information that's available to us. So that alignment information that falls in our box is what we'll retrieve when we add it to our design project. We'll select that. Going to give that a moment to run. That came in. Now in this case, I didn't have the opportunity to map it to a particular style or layer or anything like that. So what it's doing currently is it's using the system defaults. So if it turns out it's it's not of the particular style that I'm looking for based on the defaults, I can always change it to a different Civil 3D style. So with my alignment, let's cut a quick profile here. We'll select the roadway. We'll go to surface profile. We see that uh, the name of that came in as Washington Public Road 4. It's actually 196th Street. I could uh, rename that if need be. We'll just leave it as w, uh, WAPR4 for right now. We'll go ahead and create my existing ground center line for the profile. We'll draw it in profile view. And my station range, because the alignment is much longer than the area that I'm working with, we'll set my station for where it starts, my station for where it should end, over in this location, we'll say create profile view, and then I'm going to back up and we'll pick a point in space. Now when that came in, although I only did a portion of it, it still looked at the entire length, which is why it's over here on the side. Let's move this a little bit closer to my project area. And I'll set my thickness here to make that a little bit easier to see. There is my, <coughs> excuse me, there is my, uh, my profile for the roadway. Okay, now we brought the pipes in. Let's grab some of those pipes very quickly. We'll grab those. I'm going to hold down the shift key, drop a couple things I don't need. I don't need the surface and I don't need the geometry. We'll right click, draw those parts in profile view over to our profile view and when I select this guy here are the utilities that came straight from the 2D GIS file brought in as a 3D pipe network and now I have the ability that I can come in and start adding annotation or labeling or um, making adjustments whatever the case may be. We'll do one other thing here just to see one other form of an edit. I'm going to split my screen in half using the vports tool. We'll come in and look at this uh, this portion of the project here. We'll come and look at the same same portion on this side. Now you can see that this pipe is uh, is going from this direction here. At this point, it's going to the west where the last structure is. That's the same same one that's in this location using Civil 3D's dynamic model. I could grab that structure and I could relocate it to a different location. We'll just grip it at something at this point. We do that. It automatically updates 
our, uh, our model representation, both in plan and profile. So we'll say that's all the edits that I want to do for that right now. We'll come up into the data source manager. And what I want to do is I want to push those changes back to my ArcGIS online data. I'm not going to push back the center line geometry. We didn't make any changes to that. However, the location did change the uh, structure and the pipes. So we'll save that back. Give that just a moment. Now we save this back from a geometry standpoint, the location will be correct. Currently on the Civil 3D side, we can't update the attribution. So the attribution is something that can be updated on the InfraWorks side. That's something that uh, is on the way on the Civil side, but not, uh, not something that's, that's possible right now. So the geometry will be uh, reflected correctly, but the attribution will not have been updated at this point. So just need to know that as you, uh, as you review the solution. So we'll come back in and we'll take a look at it. Looks the same as it did before. We'll uh, refresh it just like we did the previous time. And we refresh it, that stub now, instead of pointing from uh, west to east, is now pointing from uh, east to west. All right, so we have the ability to make, uh, make that graphical change as well. We'll do one more thing. I'm going to come back to uh, Civil 3D and let's simplify our display here to just a single screen. We'll go to uh, just viewports and set that to single. If I was to create some new geometry in this environment, maybe I'd like to create some sanitary sewer and I'd like it to follow some of the existing uh, property lines that are available um, with the surrounding businesses. I'd like to know where those are. Uh, maybe take advantage of an easement or have an easement created. Let's go ahead and bring in one more piece of data, one more example. We'll bring in uh, some polygons that represent the parcels. Bring that into our system. So we'll go ahead and grab current parcels here. This parcel information's got limited uh, limited data, just some information about the boundary. All of, I got this offline. It was uh, freely available data. But what it... Uh, it, that's why it says uh, state, no ownership. It doesn't give us any of the actual um, uh, people who own the property, but it, it does give us some information about the parcel and the size and that. So if we turn that on, we can see what, what that property information looks like in our area. I'm going to add that to my design project, and it's automatically going to be converted into Civil 3D parcels. Now, in this case, converting it to Civil 3D parcels, uh, like the other objects I, I looked at before, I can select a particular parcel, come down and look at parcel properties and we can start going in looking at things like uh, bearing and distance and coordinates and that depending obviously on the quality of the, the data that we're bringing in. So uh, having it as a parcel may or may not be valuable. In this particular case I'm bringing it as a parcel because I just want to use it to uh, help um, identify where I want to or help locate where I want my, my sanitary sewer. Okay, but having the ability to, to convert it directly to Civil 3D parcels can be uh, can be helpful depending on the uh, the intended use. So let's do this. We'll make one last uh, creation of geometry here. We're going to go into uh, pipe creation. We'll call this SAN network parts list sanitary surface name, existing ground, alignment name. We'll do WAPR4 because then we'll get stations and offsets and that. Not going to worry about labels for right now. We'll click on OK. I'm going to set my defaults here to just be a concrete four foot structure. Sanitary sewer. We'll do uh, eight inch PVC pipe. And we'll do pipes and structures. And we'll begin at this property line. Drop another one of this property line. We'll come across the street. And we'll say that it's going to run up in this direction. Okay, just a uh, quick example of that. We've got some sanitary sewer drawn in. Let's see how we would push that back to ArcGIS Online. I'm going to go to Output. 
we will come over to publish to ArcGIS. Say connect. I'm going to clear all the data because I don't want to push everything back. The only information I'd like to push back is our new sanitary network. I'll click on OK. Automatically shows us our area of interest, where our, our utilities are with respect to their uh, location on the map. Pipes and structures, lines and points will be mapped to uh, a layer name, pipe and structure. So we'll go ahead, in this case, I'll call this uh, sand pipe, and this will be sand structures. If I click on this, same way that we were able to control the attribution that goes back to ArcGIS in InfoWorks, we're able to do the same thing on the Civil 3D side. So I could go through and uh, check those things that I'd like, uncheck those things that um, perhaps I want to maintain and, and not necessarily push back. It may be that there's just too much information. I want to limit my attribution that I send back to just a handful. For right now, we'll go ahead and just push them all. I'll say next. We'll give this service a name. We'll say SAN Network. Tags, I'll call it uh, 196. Uh, we'll call it Utilities for right now, and I'll give it a new one here. Sanitary. We'll say next. I'm going to put that in my 196 Street project and I will publish that data. So we'll go through, select my, uh, my objects based on uh, what I, I checked in that box. It will then look at how I'd like those mapped in uh, ArcGIS Online as well as the attributes that should be pushed there and it's going to go ahead and publish that to ArcGIS. So we'll give that a moment to wrap up. That's completed. We'll say View in ArcGIS. All right, there is the, uh, the information that we put, push back. If I select on a uh, pipe, we see all of that uh, attribution. We see the, uh, the slope, the start end invert, the end invert, uh, material, PVC pipe. We see the, uh, the style that was set in Civil 3D. We see uh, the reference alignment. There's my station, my offset, northing and easting. All right, lots of, uh, lots of information that's been pushed back from Civil 3D to create that. We'll do the same thing with the, uh, the structures. So I can see uh, size and information about the structure. I can see a uh, number of uh, connected pipes, rim elevation. All right, very, very helpful. Now it's, uh, this is now in a, the uh, ArcGIS side that that can be used as, as built. It can be used to supplement other information. The idea is that I was able to take civil objects directly into ArcGIS. I was able to take ArcGIS information and move it back directly into civil objects. And then we're starting to get the ability to edit those things along the way to where there is a connection maintained between the two. All right. So that um, completes the things that, that I was going to take a look at today. Hopefully that uh, has provided some insight in what's possible right now with the 2021 versions of the Autodesk software, as well as our ability to leverage the uh, Autodesk connector for ArcGIS to connect up with ArcGIS online. So... Hope this has been helpful, and I look forward to talking to you again soon. See ya.